There's no, no speed. speed control. Let's either full speed or off side. With thousands of people, if we had to communicate yeah. the way we used, used to. to. Right, you write thousands of letters. In fact, in fact I, think, I think the YouTube thing and the Facebook uh, stuff and all that, that actually came about 10, ten years too late. Mm -hmm. You know, we're already too far down. Mm -hmm. It's so. such a tangle of web, though. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's a double-edged sword. We keep yeah. saying that, isn't it? Because on the one hand, it allows for these social developments mm -hmm. to happen, and yet it also, as we were talking coming here, allows for some of the most ugly human mm -hmm. oh. conversations to occur. Oh yeah. I'm just appalled at what I, yeah, I'm reading in a Facebook, here's a really nice post, I'm reading down, here's some comments, <coughs> and then somebody comes in and, and, and this fight ensues, you know, you're such an idiot to think this, you're blah, 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 you know, and all oh, this yeah. name calling, and it goes on and on, and it, and it gets escalated totally out of control, and, and you feel like these people are going to have a duel at noon, and they're going to come with guns, you know, and, and shoot yeah. each other or something, because so it gets so angry. About, so, I get, I mean, I don't get it, it's a, it's a, but um, when I actually sit down in front of it, it shuts down my humanness in a way that really distresses me. Uh, That's know, like, what you have to work with. It, 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 it creates an anxiety in me, let's say, when I'm an anxious person. So, so um, am I supposed to learn to not be anxious? When to I'm be totally, to, to have total equanimity. To work toward that you have total it's equanimity while you're doing it's that. It's physiologically not. Yeah, I know. Yeah. I know. When I was in high school, I ran track. And there was, I remember me, and there was this guy who was this champion sprinter for this other school. And around his ankles, he wore these 10 pound weights that he would strap on with Velcro. And he would walk around all the time with these extra 10 pounds on each leg. It made him stronger. I see what this technology is doing. Like you say, it has this ability to sink us down deeper into the earth, to make us less human. Because as a human being, we should have our feet on the earth, mm -hmm. or on Araman, and stand there. So it pulls us down to make us stronger, to get, to be able to step up so and stand around. So you think it, on, a, on an individual level, in terms of what it does to the human body, it's, a, it's about making us stronger. Yeah. And, and, and uh, to, get the idea, and to yeah. get the idea that, that we actually can be in levity all the time. Like, uh, you, have to, you have to know how to get in levity, even though you're very heavy, you know? Like, you know, a 200-pound person jumping up and saying, I can lift 200 pounds? You can. Yeah? So that's why, again, you're with me. So yeah, that's the next thing. <laughs> that's great. <laughs> and this, so, the, the technology is not the only manifestation of Aramon. Well, Aramon has been with us. Everywhere. Mm -hmm. Everywhere. Mm -hmm. So thing. it's not all of a sudden this is a no. threat. We've had to deal with Aramon in other forms yeah. through right. previous incarnations. Yeah. Yeah. So it was ever thus. Yes. Not new. So, so how do you... How do you identify our like, Right now, I, I would identify it as, you know, the trouble with technology, but how else would you use it? So, coldness, 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 heartlessness, yes. egoism, but in a different sense, an egoism that says, I don't care about the rest of you, whereas Lucifer's egoism is, I want you all to love me. Yeah. And contraction. And contraction. That's and the contraction? that's. Yeah. If you if you contract it in any ways, if your muscles are sort of seized, then know you know, right. Ariman's got you. And if you're hanging out all over the place, then Lucifer's got you. And if, <laughs> and if your sense of reality is numbers, weights, and measures, and that's how you approach everything in life, 
Now it's very aromatic. Yeah, that's another word. Right. Calculable and calculating. Yeah, it's both of them, and they're so alike. Okay, chat box. This is this is a phenomenon that you're going to see across all the social media within the next two years. It's already there, <coughs> quite a few of them, um, where there is artificial intelligence taking the place of the call center. And they will help you through your problems that you're having with their product, their company, whatever, or anything else in life. It's already using it. Already. Already. They're already using it. Absolutely. Right? That's why I say, but it's, it's going to be pervading much more because these companies have built these chat boxes. So it's very easy to pay, I don't know, say $3,000 for the software. You can put it on your website. You know, and then you, you personalize it. So if somebody calls up and says, um, I don't like your children's book, I think you know it's it's too wishy-washy or something, my artificial intelligent robot could handle that call for me. Sorry, that's probably You're not You're not gonna example, get anywhere. No, no one Am I going the wrong direction? Okay. Um, so we're going to get into the sex bots. Uh, sorry, we got 15 minutes. Uh, Pygmalion. It was a sculptor, and he falls in love with this beautiful woman that he's sculpted. And here's a picture from this story. And um, he goes then to the altar of Aphrodite and says, "I so love this woman I've sculpted." Can you make her real? Here's a story about the times we're in that comes from ancient times. He returns and he goes and gives his sculpture a kiss and he finds the lips are warm. She has some life to her, so he marries her. He can't have children. Do you see how this story speaks to our time? So we're developed. I wish we could make this darker because very, very human-like faces. In fact, faces that are so perfect they put little <coughs> imperfections in to make them look more real, mm -hmm. and they are able to show facial movement and show expression. I see. You can see it on YouTube. Yeah, you can see these on YouTube. Yeah, there's TED Talks, Robotica Talks, and the New York Times videos. A uh, company called Hanson Robotics saying, we're bringing robots to life. Mm -hmm. That's their company motto. Uh, another one that's fascinating, the five most advanced humanoid robots from the United States and Japan. This is going on in Europe as well, and uh, other places in the Far East, China, and so on. So we saw this picture, um, and this article talked from the BBC community talked about um, a sense that in the future, we're only going to need a few men around. Men will go away. And there'll be a few as drones. But, so, but as a woman, can you, I mean, she's obviously an actress, but it just, it gets me the wrong way to see this picture, which is why I'm using it, of course. How can you make love? Because how can you? Oh, it's totally endowed. So this, is, this one is made to look grosser. It's made to evoke an emotional response. But there are male robots that look just like me. And they are endowed with genitalia and everything else, and they will have orgasms. So here's one in China called Jia Jia, and her whole disposition is to be the good oriental wife, and she will be very submissive to every approach as a male, developed by a male. It's the beginning of time. Absolutely. And now we have them. the step. But it's not what women want. 
There was a movie, The Stepford Wives. Yeah, yeah. that's what I mentioned yesterday. Exactly. And that's the yeah. thing. The, 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 there's not enough of the feminine influence. Right. Well, they don't want the feminine influence in this particular realm because women, it's not well, only a woman who's been co opted would want this. But in both cases, isn't it just masturbation? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. absolutely. Yeah. And it but, has nothing to do with love. No. <laughs> yeah. It has to do. It has to do with getting into expansion because we're so contracted all the time. When when orgasm orgasm is nothing else but an expansion, a momentary expansion. So that's what people are looking for. So you might as well. Right. So imagine you have grown up with this teddy bear to. Mm -hmm. As a teenager, you have another companion. Yeah, yeah. You go to um, sex education in high school, and they're going to have robots like these present, and there's male and female ones, and you'll learn about sex in sex education through the robots. Why not? I can think of a lot of reasons why not. But you wouldn't have to worry about catching anything. Oh, yes? Are you sure about that? Maybe there's some residue left from the previous right. sex class. Right. You have to have your own. Yeah. Well, they do that with babies, right? The parenting is these dolls, right? Absolutely. Where you learn how to diapers. breastfeed and all sorts yeah. of things, yeah. <coughs> so they actually have one that they try to pawn off as a healthcare robot for people who are having sexual difficulty, sexually dysfunctional people, and they call her Roxy with triple X. <laughs> and I wish you could see this, but she has skin that feels your touch and can say things like, oh, honey, I love your touch. Can you touch me there as well? And of course, they advertise on their site that she never says, not, to de not tonight, dear, I have a headache. <laughs> um, anyway, you get the picture, and it's a, it's a very, I think it's going to be a very difficult picture for human beings to have real relationships between the sexes. Mm -hmm. yeah. We already have. 20-year-olds saying, I've been so polluted by your porn from your older generations, I'm afraid that I can't have a normal relation, sexual relationship with normal women because they don't look normal to me. Right. They don't act normal to me. I'm, I'm so used to the porn. Right, and it's wiring uh, male brains. The neoplasticity yeah. of the brain has been set and, and to expect something. And so if you're having sex with a robot that has the most incredible orgasms and tells you all these wonderful things about what a good sexual partner you are, and then you go have a real sexual encounter, it's going to be disappointing. It's going to be fatal. <laughs> and so what do you think is going to happen to fertility? In Japan, they already have a problem because the men don't want to. It's already all over the internet. <laughs> and if we have the social interaction problems because kids aren't allowed to play mm -hmm. anymore, they're mm -hmm. locked away in their you know, apartments, and their only interaction is through Facebook or messaging, we have no social skills. People are going to prefer these robots to the real thing because it's not a problem. Mm -hmm. I don't have people getting upset with me. I can have a nice conversation with Roxy and she's going to tell me what a good person I am. I'm taking a writing class right now <clears throat> to prepare and we're not allowed to criticize each other's writings. We're only allowed to say something nice. Nice, eh? <laughs> Go ahead and resist this. Right. I think it's useful to ponder Steiner's definition of uh, devotion and love. Right. You know those, what he said? He said in 
uh, <clears throat> devotion is when we um, carry someone within us. Right. And love is when we carry ourselves within someone, put ourselves within someone. 